How bad is this for Comedy Central? Let's just start with that. Well, I think it's, it's going to be a ratings hit. It's a big hole in their lineup now. They lost uh, Colbert earlier in the year. That, that, that's another hole in their lineup. So if you're Viacom, which is the owner of Comedy Central, you've had ratings issues across your networks over the last several years. So now Comedy Central is another uh, one of your networks that you're going to have to fill some big holes in prime time. Is it realistic to think that someone could replace Jon Stewart and keep the ratings up, or is that kind of a lost cause? I think that's, you know, certainly in the near term, that's almost an impossibility, I would think. I think An impossibility? That, impossibility, that that's right. I think it'd be very difficult to do. I think if you're Comedy Central, you're looking to either bring in somebody big who could maybe, you know, keep the ratings up, or do you go and bring in an unknown, much as Jon Stewart was at the time, and try to build it back up again and build a big loyal following? Uh, again, they have, they have issues in other day parts as well, but this is a, probably not welcome news for the folks at Comedy Central and Viacom. Which well, do you think is the I better move? Hold on. Couldn't they have just paid? I mean, do we know why he left? If it's, if it's unwelcome news, if they're in big trouble, could they not have just paid him more dough? They're paying him I, reportedly $25 million a year, so I can't imagine it's about money for him, although it's always about money. <laughs> uh, but, um, so, you know, but again, 17 years, as he said, it's a grind. It's four nights a week, and uh, you've got to be topical four nights a week. He's got, obviously, a, a world-class writing staff. So, um, um, But again, I'm sure it's uh, something that... It had to happen at some point in time. I don't know if Comedy Central has any backup plan or any, you know, plan B. But, uh, again, they've got a couple fires to put out there. I think it's got to be, part of it has to be that it is a grind. Like, from our seat, we think, who wouldn't want Jon Stewart's job? Best job ever. But remember, the guy took almost last summer off to make his documentary. Right. Getting out there every day and doing a show is hard, even if you have the best writers in the world. He probably looks at a guy like Jerry Seinfeld. Jerry Seinfeld does comedians with cars. It right. doesn't take him a couple days a month. He right. makes a ton of dough. He's doing it with all his friends. It's really fun. John Stewart might right. be like, you know what? I'm a little tired. It's probably the time of his life. Again, he's probably, as he said, he's going out on a high note, or as it's been written, he's going out on a high note. So he probably has lots of opportunities for other things to do. Again, he's probably, you know, got the wherewithal that he can do anything he wants now. Um, so, again, it, it's probably good news for him. It's a great opportunity for him, it's a challenge for Comedy Central and Viacom. So speaking of not going out on a high note yesterday, obviously, <laughs> it's the Brian Williams uh, news. What is the future? Does he have a future, you think, in news, or is like this six-month uh, suspension going to ultimately be the end of his career? Yeah, I th it's going to be tough. You know, well, ha I, I think everybody involved, you know, NBC, Brian Williams himself, is hoping that six months will, will heal all wounds. I don't know. I, I suspect in the business that, that he's in and other, you know, news anchors are in, which is trust, um, you know, I think it's going to be probably pretty difficult for him to come back. So if you're NBC, again, you're probably thinking about a long-term plan B. How big, how important is NBC News to Comcast? Because I feel like when all this deal first happened, NBC News was sort of the the crown jewel, but I'm not sure if nightly news yeah, it's matters not. that much. It doesn't matter. It, it's, I think it's immaterial to Comcast in general. I think that the, the news division is a profitable division. It does contribute. Uh, the actual NBC nightly news, that 30-minute broadcast, is absolutely immaterial to Comcast. Uh, what is material is, again, kind of the psychic value of owning a, a you know, brand name news network and the influence that it brings Comcast um, and it brings NBC. So it's something they want to get right. It's something that uh, they want to get on, on top of. But again, from a financial perspective, uh, not really relevant to Comcast. But again, you know, Steve Burke, who runs all of the entertainment businesses um, you know, for Comcast, he's the one that delivered the news to Brian Williams. He's the one that's going to have to you know, replace him and do all that. So. And so you think this six-month suspension, you think that maybe we're going to be watching um, trials or auditions for his re full-time replacement? I think you might. I think, I think you might. And I think they might think outside of the box. I'm sure they're going to give Lester Holt, who's a longtime NBC News veteran and, and you know, with very high standing, they're going to give him a shot, see how the feedback is there. I suspect they will bring in some other folks, maybe outside of the box, other parts of N NBC, maybe just outside of the NBC company. But could we see a shift? I mean... Giving nightly news anchors as much control as they have over the last 30 years, now that nightly news isn't as important as it once was, is there a chance they don't put somebody in the position who's massively important or give them that much control? Because if you're Comcast right now, you might say, Brian Williams has just made a fool of us. Why did we give him that big of a voice, that much power? I, I think you're right, and I think it reflects the fact that, you know, the, the nightly news and the news divisions in, in parts of these big conglomerates aren't nearly as, as material and as important as they used to be. Uh, that being said, I think they still take a lot of pride in them. I, th I think they still want to put their best foot forward, but I don't think, I think that, you know, the, the 
days, obviously, of the Walter Cronkite, but even of the, the Peter Jennings at ABC News, the Dan Rather at uh, CBS, I think those days in terms of control, uh, editorial control, are probably on the way out. Because if you take a look at the news organization, NBC, it's huge with CNBC and MSNBC. It's, it's a big organization. You tell me, whose news is more relevant to you, Mark Andreessen's tweets or what Brian Williams is reading to you? Mark Andreessen's tweets. It's not, yeah. even, it's, not right. even a, it's not even a comparison. Right. So, I mean, Twitter breaks news, and then that also gives you context with the, with, with the news. So, again, it's, it's a changing dynamic. And, and, and that's why, you know, the ratings, I mean, they were pretty happy with Brian Williams getting nine, nine and a half million viewers a night. That's, that's a relatively small number in the context of, you know, primetime programming in general. So, again, so it's just not as relevant. That being said, uh, all the networks still place a lot of value, uh, I guess psychic value, if you will, if not economic value, on their news divisions in general and on their, you know, their nightly newscast. That's still a little bit of a beacon for them, and they do take it. Maybe this is an opportunity to break out of that mold. Maybe.